It's a happy new year. It's a welcome back to the program. Justin Marshall joins us. And Marshy, while we're just getting lashed here in Auckland, you just got an Indian summer going on, have you? Bastards. Yeah, we have. Yeah, that's the way it works out there. And uh, happy new year to you and um, all the listeners out there. Uh, it's been an amazing summer down here in Queenstown, the lower South Island. I've been very, very blessed this uh, summer that we've had uh, incredible sunshine, um, hot weather. And uh, I can tell you without... Shout of a doubt, mate, Lake Wakatipu has been the warmest it's ever been. You can literally be in there for half an hour now rather than 30 seconds. So that tells the story. <sighs> okay, well, just let me pause for breath after that because, I mean, I do want to say something foul and rude, but I won't. I mean, it's just bitter and twisted <laughs> living here in the winterless north. You've been watching the Six Nations like we all have. That test match yeah. on the weekend, Ireland, France, how good was that game? Yeah, it was very good. You know, number one and two in the world and... You know, the expectation was that there was always going to be um, a real ding-dong battle, and, and it proved to be so, even though the scoreboard, I think, to a degree, flattered Ireland a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think they basically laid the foundation of why they are number one and two in the world at the moment. Um, I certainly feel that uh, many people have asked me since watching Ireland's progression in the last two years who my sort of, I guess, outside prediction if the All Blacks weren't going to win the Rugby World Cup, um, would be, and I've always said Ireland, I think they're just such a well-balanced side. They're very well coached. They know where their strengths are. They've got a great architect in Johnny Sexton. As long as he stays fit, is what I say, they're, they're definitely worth a bet. And I think they proved that they're a very dangerous side at home. It's just whether or not they can replicate that in France. Well, I mean, you're still talking positively about the All Blacks. What says to you that the All Blacks are going to beat, beat them or France? Well, I think when you look at the current state of the game at the moment, um, you know the All, the All Blacks are by no means standing out as better than any of the other sides. Um, in fact, you know, on the on any given day, probably the top five, four teams in the world could beat the All Blacks, and they've shown that in the last two years. So there's nothing um, sort of secret about that. That's just statistically has happened. Um, so in my mind, I feel that that pressure has been alleviated. Now it's just about the ambition to play. And we've spoken about this, Devs, regularly last year. It's just whether or not the All Blacks can come out of their shell and be the side that we know that they can be and not worry about the fact that they are a side that's under pressure because I don't feel that that pressure come um, September or October will be on them. Definitely it'll be on France, the home nation, the host nation, and certainly it'll be on Ireland, who, again, are unbeaten and probably will stay unbeaten up until that point. So it's an opportunity for the All Blacks to change the way they're playing, to show the, the rest of the world something different, start playing to our strengths and produce the type of rugby that the rest of the world hasn't seen them play in a couple of years. That's their opportunity to ambush that Rugby World Cup. Is, you know, what, what has changed, do you see, in Ireland since they beat us last year? Do you, do you see anything watching these Six Nations games or the end of year tour games last year where you think, oh yeah, they've, they've improved or their mindset is relaxed or they've got that monkey off their back or something? I mean, can you detect anything there? But barring injury, um, it's just continuity of selection. You know, but you, you know pretty much what that Ireland side is going to be if there is not an injury. And, and because of that, um, they've built a side also around the fact that when they do have one or two missing, you know, say James Gibson Parks out, Connor Murray steps in, uh, world class, British line, over 100 tests, you know, so that they then have the ability to fill that gap without really missing a blip in the radar. They know their game plan well, their back row is regular. You know, it's been a problem with the All Blacks. You know, we, we constantly are changing our mind about who plays 10, who plays wing, who plays fullback, what the balance of the back row is. Five, five, not so much, but you know those key positions, they're, they're the areas that Ireland knows so well. You know that Thunder Flair is going to get over the ball. You know that he'll carry when it gets close to the line. Um, you know that sort of Doris and Co, that, that they are big, hard ball runners and they'll front up and the centres are consistent. Like I said, the architects and Gibson Park and Sexton, the regularity of their side is, is the reason they've been successful. There's something to learn there. Uh, the All Blacks have been far from that. The amount of players that they recycle in and out in the last two years has just been, yeah, you've, I you've think, talked about that a lot, yeah. given some mm. rhythm. Mm. Yeah. And the combinations as well, and the continuity of the combinations. Yes. And you're right, you know, I mean, we're still, we're still not sure who our number six is, who the best number 10 is, who our midfield is, who our back, yeah. you know. And so, 
the, the way that the French played, did that surprise you, that helter-skelter kind of rugby? I mean, they seem to lack all kind of discipline, all, all, all kind of control. Wanted to play broken, broken play rugby from their own half. That's not going to win a World Cup. No, but I think um, Sabine Gold today and, and maybe their, their leadership group, which is still reasonably um, immature, you know, when, when, you, when you look at DuPont and Co., Intermac, they, they, are, they are still, you know, in their early 20s. So they still haven't been enough to the coalface, but, man, they, they can play, and, and they will be players in the leadership group. But I think they just felt what is a massive frustration um, in playing Islanders. Defensively, they're just so very good. They, they, they really do suffocate you into panicking. And unless you are disciplined or you show them something completely different, they'll just wear you down defensively. I think France didn't quite get their balance right. You, you absolutely got it bang on, Dev. They kind of went a little bit too far the other way where they tried to show Ireland something they wouldn't have analysed. They're usually a little more structured than that. And they just went too far the other way in trying to play too much. Um, but you could see what the mindset was. They're thinking about how they go about beating a side that defensively is so good. So they'll probably get that balance better. They would have learnt from that game. Um, but, man, when they do decide to have that mindset, they can be a very dangerous side that can open any team up in the world from anywhere on the park. Do we need to talk about any of the other sides up that part of the world, or is it is it those two, us and South Africa? I'm leaning towards wow. that, that quartet now. Well, yeah, but like, you know, I, I wouldn't like to be South Africa in the opening round of Marseille um, playing Scotland. <laughs> That's for sure. Like, you know, Argentina playing England in the opening round of the Rugby World Cup. Yes, I know that's a long way off, and it's to a degree not the question you're asking me. But, yes, I've been impressed with the type, style of rugby. They've finally got Finn Russell in the space that he needs to be. Him and Gregor Russell are seeing eye to eye, rather than butting heads. Um, and so now he is playing very good rugby, and he is a creative player. All of a sudden, we are seeing Scotland score tries from inside their own 22. You know, you've got Thunder Merva, who's breaking tackles. They've got a really good midfield. Their back row led, uh, led by um, uh, Jamie, help me, Jamie Ritchie, yep. um, are, are, are very well balanced. Um, you know, they are, they are a very good side, and uh, you know, they are not a team to be taken lightly. Um, you know, apart from that, England and Wales are really struggling. Um, but, yeah, you know, you saw what, uh, you know, Italy are capable of against France and the way they pushed the All Blacks last time. I, I certainly feel that the standard of rugby there, Devs, has dramatically lifted. Um, you know, England and Wales, yes, dragging the chain. But the rest of those sides, you know, they're capable on their day. Justin Marshall is with us, 81 Test veteran for the All Blacks. Of course, he'll be all over Sky TV, and we thoroughly enjoy having him on the platform every week, talking rugby as well. Super Rugby Aotearoa is about to kick off. I've still got my absolute knickers in a twist over this five-game rule, mate, where the players can't play more than five games and they've got to have a rest. I mean, a guy like Roger Tuivasar shek I mean, for God's sake, he hasn't played any rugby. Sure, I mean, look, we're going to have to win back-to-back-to-back test matches, quarter semis final, three test matches in 15 days. We had the opportunity to try this out last year on the end of year two against Wales, Scotland, England. We didn't. I don't know why there's this reluctance to have our players playing. I mean, explain it to me. Yeah, well, this is all the, the algorithms and the data that they analyse now, and they feel that players do after a certain period of time through the training fatigue and then combine that with lots of minutes um, do have fluctuations in their performance but you know I, I feel that that you know in the past when that wasn't as heavily monitored players who went out there and were playing week in week out without that mandatory rest uh, and this is going back into my, into my day as well um, you had you had actually uh, maybe that fifth or sixth game where they're now telling you to have a rest and you were slightly off on the day. You probably didn't play as well as you should have. It didn't have a dramatic effect. But when you analysed yourself individually, you went, oh, jeez, you know what? I, didn't, I, didn't, I was off today. And then, bang, it really motiv- it motivates you. It's not others motivating you, saying you need to rest and then you need to do this. You go, oh, man, I need to lift my game here. I was off at the weekend. Um, and, 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 and it gives you more responsibility rather than being dictated to all the time. So... I'm with you, mate. I, I feel that the players need to take responsibility for their performances. And all I wanted to do, and, I, and many players will tell you, this is play. They don't want to be told, no, you can't play this weekend, when, when that's the fifth game and now it's the Blues Crusaders and you, you take three or four players out of each side. They're like, shit, this is what I live my season for playing this game. And now New Zealand Rugby are telling me to stand down. I don't agree with it, never have. 
The coaching thing that's going on at the moment as well, I mean, this is another one that sticks in my craw, and I don't know how it's going to unfold, um, but what Razor said last week indicates that there is an announcement coming soon. I don't know about you, mate, but I just feel like, I mean, you've been there, you've worn this jersey, you know what it means to not only yourself, your team in New Zealand as well. There's something that is quite toady about what is going on from Ian Foster's perspective, I believe. He's just not being treated right, and I don't like it. And I, just as a man, I don't like it as a, you know, with the position he holds and the responsibility of that all-black coach. It just feels toady and it feels turdy, mate. I don't know what your thoughts on it are, but I just want, I just think that you have, New Zealand rugby needs to be a bit more bloody respectful. If it's, if it's going to happen, get it out of the way. But treat this guy like he deserves to be treated. i tell you what, Des, the start of the 2023 season, on a great note, because I agree with you again. <laughs> two on the bounce, we're on fire. Man. Go on, um, Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, when New Zealand Rugby Union made that commitment to, to Fozzie till the end of the Rugby World Cup or the end of the, the, this calendar year, um, that commitment has to be absolutely without any wavering whatsoever. There needs to be no doubt uh, in his mind that his job is to coach that team through until then, and then we will look at the future. And that's the decision that they made. So they've got to stick by that. So all this speculation and rumour floating around about the next all-black coach, you know, imagine being him, not knowing that and not, not thinking, to, thinking to himself, you know what, that could be me. He needs to stay motivated. He needs to know that if he turns this team around and turns it into a world-class team, that there's a possibility he can continue to coach it. And throwing stuff out in the media, um, not making us uh, putting your stake in the ground and not, and not um, backing... Uh, the, the current coach, it, it would be unsettling for him. You know, you have to have a very strong backbone. And I agree with you. I don't feel it's right. I don't feel the rest of the country either should be buying into it. We should simply be getting behind the current coach, his, his support staff and the players that he picked and backing them 100% to the hilt so that they can come home with that cup again because by how that would be a hell of a um, either ongoing coaching um, opportunity for him to, to progress on or a great way to go out, one or the other. But let's just get our crap together and support.